Hi, and welcome to Serverless Migration Station, a mini-series dedicated to helping developers modernize their apps running on serverless compute platforms like App Engine. This is Wesley from Google, joined by my colleague Martin and Porter the Train to help you get to your destination. Glad to be here, Wes. Where is Porter taking us today? Well, in Module 17, we show developers how they can upgrade runtimes, like from Python 2 to 3, Java 8 to 17, and so on, but continue to use App Engine's legacy bundle services. Ah, I do remember that episode. So instead of migrating away from those bundled services, you showed us uh, the code tweaks necessary for Python 3 apps to access those bundled services, right? That's right. I also mentioned that most runtimes like Java, Go, and PHP don't require code changes, only Python. And that for most bundled services, code changes are minimal with some exceptions, which brings us here to Module 22 to look at bundled services requiring more code changes than the others. That's good. I don't want to leave those users hanging. Uh, by the way, uh, what are those bundled services that require more code changes? So here's the list of which bundled services are available in second gen runtimes like Python 3, and the ones we're looking at today are Blob Store, Mail, and Deferred. Got it. Now, why are these services so special that they need extra code changes? That's a good question. And the answer has to do with their legacy. In one way or another, it involves a part of App Engine that changed between the first and second generations whether it's a dependency on the web app or web app 2 frameworks that are not available in Python 3, or parts of app.yaml that are no longer supported. Ah, that makes sense. Uh, I can't wait to see the code changes, uh, but I'm curious if more information is available in the documentation. You just read my mind. Our documentation features pages specifically dedicated to these three services and how to use them in Python 3. They're also linked below in the video description for your convenience, but today we're diving in a bit deeper than what's featured in the docs. And you told me earlier that the code samples are different than the ones featured in previous videos in the series. Uh, why is that, Wes? Well, that's right. So the code samples today are different in that they're not based off of the module zero or one baseline sample apps like the others. The main reason is that there are no migrations other than porting from Python 2 to 3. So we're going to go to the computer where I'll show you shorter but still complete sample apps, put up the Python 2 and 3 versions up against each other, and then highlight the differences between them. With that, let's start this conversation off with Blob Store. In Module 15, we showed you how to add Blob Store usage to the Module 1 sample app to allow visitors to upload and visit artifact like an image. Instead of migrating to cloud storage like we did in Module 16, let's take a shorter Blob Store sample and show how to port it to Python 3. Today's Module 22 basic Blob Store app lets end users upload a photo. Pick something to upload with a file picker. Once selected, click on the Submit button to make it happen. If all goes well, you'll see the image you uploaded. The app is fairly basic as it doesn't provide for downloads other than performing the one download to confirm that your upload succeeded. Now let's compare the Python 2 Web App 2 version to the Python 3 Flask version starting with app.yaml. The updates to app.yaml are similar to those we've already seen throughout this series. Change the runtime to a supported Python 3 version, today that would be 3.9 or 3.10, and delete everything else. To use bundled services in Python 3, add an App Engine API's directive set to true. Finally, Python 3's Pakeling protocol is backwards incompatible to Python 2's, so add this environment variable telling App Engine to use a lower level protocol that both understand. This is needed for Python 3 apps that use App Engine NDB to talk to Data Store. You'll see this environment variable in all of the Python 3 app.yaml files today. Migrating away from Web App 2 is required to move to Python 3, so we arbitrarily chose Flask. Web App 2 apps run almost exclusively on App Engine, but Flask apps run on App Engine and most other hosting services, increasing the portability of your app. To use Flask or other WSGI frameworks, create a requirements.txt file specifying third party packages, namely Flask and the App Engine SDK, the latter of which we enabled in app.yaml a moment ago. That's it for config. Moving to main.py, replace the Web App 2 import at the top with what we need from Flask. Also import the App Engine SDK WSGI wrapper to access bundled services in Python 3. Blobster functionality has been moved out of the original web app framework into the App Engine SDK, so swap the import of its handlers from web app to the Blobster component of the SDK. Next, instantiate the Flask app and WSGI wrap it. The photo upload data model stays identical, containing just the blob key for the uploaded image file. The photo upload handler's base class now comes directly from Blobstore instead of web app. And finally, so the user can view what they uploaded, switch the redirect style from Web App 2 to Flask. Flask routes to functions while Web App 2 routes to handler classes. 
So to do this with Flask, a new upload photo function is added to handle the post request. It then instantiates the handler class and calls its post method. Now do something similar with the view photo handler. Switch the base class from web app to blob store and try to get the blob key. If successful, send the blob to the user. An HTTP header for the content type is set so that App Engine can provide its best guess rather than taking Flask's default. And like the upload handler, we need to create a function for the Flask route which instantiates the view handler and calls its get method with the image's blob key. Finally, replace the Web App 2 main handler class with a Flask equivalent. Flask functions are route decorated, so the Web App 2 routing dispatch table isn't needed, so remove it. And that's it for Blob Store. Feel free to try either the Python 2 or 3 versions of this app, or both, using the usual gcloud app deploy command followed by visiting the app in a browser window. You'll find that both apps work identically. Moving on to Deferred, if you're new to this service, it's a higher level abstraction for spawning extra work to run later. It uses the default push task queue, but doesn't require you to know how to set up or use push queues. All you do as a developer is specify a function to run later along with required parameters. The sample app is just a basic auto-incrementing counter starting at zero. If you visit the app, it'll go up by one. Hit it again, it's now at two, and so on. Switch the runtime in the app.yaml file from Python 2 to a current Python 3 version like 3.10 and delete everything else. The handler for deferred comes on by default in Python 3, so you don't need to specify this in the built-in section like with Python 2. Add the App Engine SDK directive and pickling protocol environment variable. As far as the app goes, the updates will mostly be familiar. Replace Web App 2's import with Flask and add an import of the WSGI wrapper. Instantiate Flask like usual, then call the WSGI wrapper, but one difference here is to pass in the use deferred parameter with a true value to enable the deferred service. The basic counter and its increment function stay identical. Now replace the Web App 2 main handler class with a Flask main handler function. The call to defer execution of the counter bumper is identical on both sides. Last but not least, remove the Web App 2 routing table. As with Blob Store, feel free to deploy either deferred app and discover that they both work identically. The most interesting one today is email. Taking a step back, the mail service gives App Engine apps the ability to send or receive email. Sending email stays the same, meaning there are no code differences upgrading from Python 2 to 3. What is different is in receiving email. Now you may be thinking, yeah, sending email, I get it, but receiving messages means your users are emailing an app. And what can you possibly do with that? Boy, have I got a video for you. I made this one a while back showing how you can change the world in just 10 lines of code supporting inbound email. Check it out for your next startup idea. The basic app feature today saves the last email it's received. When visiting the app, it will display that email message along with expected metadata like the sender, timestamp, and subject line. Now let's take a look at the app. In app.yaml, replace the runtime with a current Python 3 version like 3.10 and delete almost everything else, keeping the inbound services section. Add the App Engine SDK to access the bundle services and the pickling protocol environment variable. In the main app, import the escape function. In Python 2, it's in the CGI module but it got moved in Python 3 to the HTML package. Now replace Web App 2 with Flask. Like with Blob Store, import the mail handlers from the mail component of the App Engine SDK instead of Web App. Lastly, import the WSGI wrapper. There are constants for the entity key string and the email headers we're interested in. The email body is also important even though it's not in fields, but we need to do some processing to get it, so it's not as simple as just copying a string like the other ones listed. The final constant is the HTML template for displaying the last received email with. Below that, instantiate the Flask app and WSGI wrap it. The Python 2 email handler class and its receive method are replaced with a Flask mail handler function. When an email is received, the App Engine system posts the message to your app at the slash underscore ah slash mail endpoint, including the receiving email address, and the post handler calls the receive method with that message. In Python 2, the mail handler class extracts the message and gives it to you by the time receive is called. But in Python 3, you have to instantiate the message yourself by passing it the Flask request payload. The last message data store entity is fetched or created, and the basic fields filled in. Getting the email body requires extra processing. 
The message components are encoded, so to keep it simple, grab the first plain text chunk found, decode it, add it to the entity, then save to data store. Like the other apps, the main handler class and get method are replaced by a Flask handler function. It fetches the last save message entity, turns it into a hash or Python dictionary, then passes the values to the template, HTML escaping the values. Finally, remove the web app to routing table. And that's it. Like the others, deploy either Python 2 or 3 versions of this app, then email your app, and now you've got that next big thing that goes viral. For today, our journey is done. Now you know how to use the Blobster, Deferred, and Mail bundle services in both Python 2 and 3. That was a useful demo of using those special bundle services in both Python 2 and 3. Uh, while they needed a few more code changes than the other bundle services, it seemed fairly straightforward. Uh, and I like that I can upgrade my app from Python 2 to 3 without having to migrate off the bundle services and without having to rewrite all my code. That's right, Martin. It's good to be able to minimize major rewrites, which makes it less likely you'll break something. On the other hand, one challenge is that your app can only run on App Engine. Right. You did mention last time that moving off the bundled services does make your app more portable, meaning developers can consider moving to modern serverless platforms like Cloud Functions and Cloud Run, right? That's right, Martin. Cloud Functions is a good choice if you wanted to break up a large App Engine app into multiple microservices. And if containerization is now part of your software development workflow, there's Cloud Run, which you can use even if you know nothing about Docker or containers. Finally, also consider VM-based compute platforms like Compute Engine VMs or GKE, our managed Kubernetes service, if you want even more control, like being able to SSH into servers. So while it is more effort to making your apps more portable, it does extend your app's capabilities in the long run. Yes, and if our viewers do decide to migrate off the bundle services, they can take advantage of all the serverless migration videos we've already done. That's right. And we've got plenty of migration models to help you move to cloud storage, TAS, PubSub, data store, memory store, and identity platform. We also have content if considering moving to one of our serverless 2.0 platforms like Cloud Functions or Cloud Run, where we have content for those who already know Docker, as well as those who are new to containers. This wraps up our part two content on using bundled services in Python 3. Be sure to review Module 17 if you missed Part 1, which includes special guest Aaron, who's crafting a parallel series for Java App Engine developers. Wow, we've certainly built out a whole rail system of different migrations to help App Engine developers modernize their apps, haven't we, Wes? Yes, we have. And on behalf of Martin and I, thanks for staying with us on all of these modernization journeys where Porter takes you to where you want to go. We hope to see you at the next Migration Station or on another serverless expedition soon. In the meantime, happy travels.